Hey, what's up, big mates? I'm Dominique, and welcome to another instructional video here on our YouTube channel. But this time, I'm with a very, very special person. He might as well be the most important person in our company, after me, of course. Uh, some people might know him as Daylor, or some of you might just know him as Luis. Why are you so scared? Oh, hey, Luis. Yo! What's up? What's up? I'm glad you're here and it's no longer just me talking to the camera. Yeah, it's been a bit uh, rough months with all the coronavirus and isolation yeah. or yeah, it's a bit difficult. First of all, before we begin, I just want to say thanks to everyone who have been so participative in our subreddit. Uh, we've been getting a lot of people who have just been starting conversations and helping other people answer questions about the Digma race. And one common topic we have is actually about the touch typing. I think Dimitri from Hardware Canucks also brought it up about how he's starting to touch type on his race using only two fingers on his left side, I think. Right side. On his right side and then four fingers on his left. I think you, Luis, can kind of relate to this somehow. Yeah, so Dimitri has this gamer typing technique and oh, yeah. I can relate because I grew up gaming, so I actually learned how to use the keyboard while gaming. So for me, it was a tool to game, not really a tool to type or to do, it was actually for gaming. Yeah, so what is it about touch typing? I mean, is it really, mm -hmm. really important to learn how to type with your 10 fingers? Or is it not enough to just type with the two fingers and four fingers here or three and four and two? So now that we've kind of grown up and we have real jobs and we cannot only game all day. We can't? But well, uh, actually, some people... actually, some people game so much that they become professionals. Really? Yeah. Is that th is that a thing? Yeah, actually, you know, at some point in my life, I was like, hmm. But anyway, right now we, as adults, we use the the keyboard mainly as a professional tool. So just to type, to send messages to our digmates, to answer emails to our digmates, and definitely to write write, write scripts, long ass scripts, yes, and long ass updates. Kickstarter updates that everyone loved. So actually typing is really important because uh, typing is basically an extension of our thinking. It's really difficult to develop our thoughts without actually putting them on a paper and then reflecting on those and, and uh, working on, on those thoughts on the paper. So if you're able to type faster, then you're able to develop your thoughts faster and this impacts your creative process. And if you're working a computer, it's really difficult that you are not creating anything. This could be code or this could be scripts, for example, updates, text, even writing a tweet, you're creating something, right? So typing fast just enables you to create faster. It's like when you have a pencil and if you're writing something on a pencil and your pencil keeps breaking, that kind of hinders your thought process because then you have to sharpen your pencil, etc. But then when you have just a very trustworthy pencil, you can write all you want. Like a pen. Like a pen. Okay. I have a pen. I have a pen. <laughs> you know what's all? <laughs> Apple pen. So in all seriousness, so for example, let's say you type two hours per day and you're a slow typist and you type at 50 words per minute. So if you increase your speed greatly, let's say to 100 words per minute, uh, then actually what you were doing in two hours, now you will do it in one hour. The important concept here is like cognitive friction. So when you have to make mental effort on uh, kind of getting your thoughts or whatever ideas you have into uh, text, if you are able to reduce that friction, you will be able to create more, create faster. So uh, touch typing creates a structure where you have to put your fingers in specific positions and each finger is in charge of a, a set of keys. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to learn this way, then this mental friction disappears and then it's easier to do this. Yeah. So for the touch typing technique, uh, you normally use your 10 fingers and each finger is assigned a section or a column on the keyboard. What normally happens is you start with your index fingers on the F or the J keys and that's why they have a little bump there so that you you're aware that you're on the F and J and this row is actually called the home row and normally your index is assigned a certain section your ring finger assigned a certain section etc and your pinkies are in charge of the modifiers on the left here and the non-alphanumeric keys on the right side, including the enter. So this is actually the technique they taught with typewriters, and even touch typists also have a few mistakes. 
Yeah, common ones are, for example, uh, crossing your fingers, so uh, with a non-split keyboard. Um, um, for example, the Y that it's here, you would normally press it with the right index, but uh, it's fairly common that touch typists actually use the left one. And actually, the same happens with the, with the B. So you would hit the B with the left index, but many times, many touch typists actually hit it with the, with the right one. And also, yeah. another fairly common mistake is uh, using the left side modifiers for the left keys or the right modifiers for the right keys. So for example, if you're going to press Shift A, you shouldn't press Shift A. That is super common. Actually, how you should do it is Shift A. And if you want to do Control, uh, control Alt 2, then you should do it like this, Control Alt 2, instead of Control Alt 2. Luis, for those who don't know how to touch type, what are the next steps or how, what do they need to do to learn how to touch type? Um, okay, so if you don't know how to touch type, probably you're one of two groups, and this is or you type with two fingers, normally with the both index, or you have like a typing combination of fingers that it's uh, probably three fingers on your left hand and two or three on your right hand, and we call this a gaming technique or gamer technique. And this is uh, you grow up uh, gaming, so you need to use your pinky, your left pinky for the modifiers for control shift and so on. So this means that your ring finger uh, rests on the a, on the A key. Okay, and then again, your keyboard, because you have a small body, your keyboard moves to the left because mm -hmm. you want to have your mouse on the right side. So this forces your right hand to cross over the keyboard. Yeah. Okay, so this means it's really difficult to type properly. And because your right hand is crossing over, then probably you're going to use one or two fingers, right? So this is kind of the, the consequence of, of gaining a lot. So this eventually leads to growing up typing this way. And people can still type fast this way, but uh, when you want to kind of go to the next level, you're really hindered by this technique. And then there's also the two fingers typing technique, right? Um, Stacy does this, and what he does is because he just uses two fingers, he doesn't even hold or press shift. So if he wants, a capital, if he wants to capitalize a letter, he'd have to press caps, and then the letter, and then caps again. That's the, efficient. That is the two fingers technique. If you're one of those people, then uh, cool. So I have my gamer typing technique and I wanted to transition to touch typing because I wanted to get the maximum out of the race. So my work is basically typing uh, all day and I didn't want to have to stop typing, like slow down my workflow because I have a ton of work. So I just spent five minutes a day and just by spending five minutes a day, actually I developed this new technique. So it's not like I replace my old technique with this new technique. Actually, now I have two typing, two typing techniques. And I can, for example, with my laptop, I will use my gamer typing technique. And with the race, I will use my touch typing technique. Okay, so first of all, you should really learn the technique. So there's no, there's no shortcut and you cannot really uh, half-ass it. You really need to take it slow and learn the technique. So what this means? This means that you really need, need to get used to positioning your hands properly in the keyboard and then uh, doing uh, touch typing exercises uh, with any of the hundreds of websites that you have to, uh, that you are able to touch type with that you could find in Google. So it's really a matter of not trying to rush it. Uh, just practice the, the movements because at the beginning it's gonna be weird or difficult uh, because uh, you've, already internalize how to type without thinking. So you have to rework this muscle memory. And it may look really complicated at the beginning, but the truth is if you practice, let's say five minutes per day for a month, you will get it. Some advice if you're gonna go through this transition is that if during your whole life, you've been typing only with two fingers on your right hand, when you start using the pinky and the ring finger, just because you're moving these muscles, this hand is going to hurt. Your muscles are going to be sore. Just like you haven't done sport in a month and then you go play a full match, same thing. Your body will hurt. Same concept here. So actually, it happened to me. I had like a, an intense pain for like two weeks, two, three weeks. Like my left hand was fine because I was used to gaming with my left hand, right? While my right one was on the, on the mouse. But my right hand felt like if it was like a wooden hand or something. So it slowly uh, build up th this kind of speed and agility in my right hand. After this transition period where you're spending a few minutes uh, touch typing every day, there will be a point that your speed on the new technique actually has caught up to the speed of your uh, gamer technique. And actually you will not need to think to type with this new technique. Through the weeks, through the months, 
your speed will increase even though you are not uh, really practicing or doing anything like not practicing in the sense of not doing specific exercises just by typing mm -hmm. your speed will continue increasing and actually this is my situation yeah so once you've done the proper touch typing technique and, and you've mastered it what's next next is optimizing your workflow with the digma race keyboard okay with a with a normal keyboard once you accurately press all keys without looking at the keyboard there's no more i mean that's all you can do yeah you can increase your speed but there's you cannot get more out of it but actually with a keyboard such as the digma race so you can relocate your high frequency keys to areas that are easier to access so for example let's say the control key the correct touch typing technique would be press the right control and then c and v okay but actually most people or the vast majority of people would actually do control c control b okay so you're doing this movement uh, all the time and this is actually not good for your wrist so instead of using this key as the control key if you would use for example this one this is so much easier because your thumb is already resting next to that key and moving your thumb one key down that's extremely easy extremely comfortable so for example that's something that you can do with this awesome keyboard another example of a high frequency key is for example the backspace so moving your pinky from this key to this one is actually quite far away so in our case we actually have the backspace in this key here and uh, it's really comfortable to hit a backspace here so even uh, you could have a, a weird combinations or shortcuts for let's say Photoshop, or Adobe Premiere or any kind of software. So let's say you have to press Ctrl Alt I. So Ctrl Alt I would be like this, right? But what you could do is you could add it to your second layer. So you could shift layer with any of your thumb keys and then press a key in the home on the home row. And that's so much easier. So this way you're improving your workflow in a way that you could not do with a normal keyboard. Okay, another thing that you can do is relocate your high impact key. So what I mean by high impact key. So for example, delete could be a high impact key. Mm -hmm. Home and end could be high impact keys. And yeah. home and end are keys that not that many people use yeah. and what what these keys do uh, what these keys do is that uh, when you press home your cursor goes to the beginning of the sentence when you press end it goes to the end of the sentence so if you press shift end then you will select uh, from the point that you are until the end of the sentence yeah. so it's so much easier for it for example to edit text if you're uh, used to using uh, these keys also if you combine the arrows with the modifiers you will be able to navigate through the text mm -hmm. so if you use home and and combine them with Control shift and arrows now you will be able to fly through the text and edit it really quickly so in my case for example i have uh, my arrows home and end on my right side hand on the second layer so i don't need to move my hand from the home row because my hand is already on those keys i just need to press my modifier key and then use those keys and uh, thanks for having a touch typing technique my hands are already used to being in that area and it's so much easier to reach this next level where I'm using the arrows home and to edit the text much quicker. And actually, once you've learned to touch type, another thing that you can do easily is split the, the keyboard to shoulder width, right? Yeah, I made a video about uh, the transition from laptop keyboard to a split ergonomic mechanical keyboard. And it's quite handy to be able to type shoulder width apart because you just tend to slouch when you're on a laptop. But when you have a split keyboard such, a, such as the Race, you can type more efficiently and more comfortably. You can also optimize your workflow because you can put your most used keys on both sides of the keyboard, use layers, like the possibilities are endless. And actually another thing is that uh, having the mouse in the middle of the keyboard is actually more comfortable when you get, once you get used to it. Yeah. And that's not possible with a normal keyboard. Yeah. Completely agree. Okay, when you are in this optimizing mode, a critical piece of advice is that you don't try to make multiple changes at the same time. Yeah. And I'm guilty of doing this all the time. And it actually slows you down. When you try yeah. to change whole blocks of keys and try to integrate many different keys to new positions, uh, then you will actually don't remember. I'm the same. I actually am still adding more shortcuts to my keyboard i recently added a home row the home and end key on my second layer and i've been finding it quite useful i've also put like punctuation marks on my other layer because i've realized that i most i use my right hand a lot for the mouse and it's good to have these other functions that you normally find on the right side 
on your left side. Actually, I have the same thing in my in my layers. I, I've moved uh, keys from the right side to the second layer in, in the left side. And uh, this speeds my workflow. And anyway, we will share these layers with you so you can check it. Awesome. So thank you, Luis, for your insight. Uh, no problem. It was a pleasure to be part of the video and I hope that we can help our dig mates to transition from this uh, gamer or two-finger typing technique into touch typing so that they can get the maximum out of the digma race. You heard it from the man. We highly recommend that you give touch typing a go so you can optimize your workflow. Anyway, thank you for staying with us throughout this whole video. We hope you learned a ton. And uh, our next video is going to be of Louise breakdancing. So you have to make sure to subscribe to our channel because if you don't, you won't be invited.